Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where uh, we've been looking into some of the updates that happened fairly recently with, uh, with the interaction between Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 and that has created a few problems here and there. The first and most significant one of these is that the recipe for Vitamelange has changed rather significantly. The main difference, I believe, is that you start to need fertilizer for this stage, making the Vitamelange bloom. So these need to be brought in over here. And so that means we need this enormous area over here growing bio, uh, bio matter up here in the, in the, in these uh, green, in these uh, well, let's call them red houses, shall we? Because they're not actually green. Uh, to bring it down here, um, to be turned into to be turned into fertilizer, to then go into the in, into the making the vitamin lange bloom. Um, and so, in order to get round this problem. I'll, I'll call it a problem. In order to get around this problem, Mark has come in and, and built an entire new uh, Vitamelange processing system, which I believe is all in theory perfectly balanced, as all things should be. However, there's been a bit of a problem with it because it currently doesn't have enough mineral water being pumped in over here. As you can see, this pipe is virtually empty. Uh, and this is a work in progress type problem because at the moment, this pipe, well, it comes over to here um, to, these, to, to all these ducts. And unfortunately, he'd run out of ducts on this planet, which is where we've got all these underground chunks here that just haven't been placed. And then, even more unfortunately, while he was in the process of shipping some additional ducts out here to, in order to finish off building this, uh, his game crashed. And then, since there are only about 10-15 sort of minutes left of the stream at that point, uh, we decided it probably wasn't worth him joining back in again. So uh, this will be fixed first thing next week, I'm sure. But in order to get it sort of ticking over, I've uh, linked up the, uh, this underground pipe across here to sort of to bypass this missing duct and to get things at least flowing a little bit from these three uh, three drills over here that are pulling up a decent chunk of uh, mineral water. But as you can see, it's all getting pulled away very, very quickly because it's required in quite a lot of places. Over here, it's being used both for making the ammonia over here, which is used to do goodness knows what. As you, that's also used in making the fertilizer, as well as being used directly in making the fertilizer over here. Which means a lot of these machines are running. They're running a bit slowly. They're not producing the fertilizer at the speed we'd like them to, and so the whole system is not. It's not running at full speed. But when it is, we should have a nice trickle of the uh, of the Vita. The process vitamin, is that vital spice? I think it might be. Coming out of here, going into, in along here, where it can then be reprocessed and, and purified. Some of it gets shipped off this way to be shipped off to Norvis if we need it, or to Norbit specifically. Uh, and then the uh, the refined stuff comes up here to be shipped off to wherever. And then that can also be passed down over here to be made into the acids and into the uh, into the epoxy. Well, this, this isn't the epoxy. This is the, the reagent and the epoxy over here. So there are lots and lots of different Vita products. The, the original difficulty of Vita products is still there in that you have lots and lots of different ones but they all take in massive quantities and so the easiest way to ship them around or at least the best way to ship them around that we decided on is to ship them all in their finished in their finished form so, so we're sending all of the intermediates out from here unlike for example um, the iridium where we're shipping just shipping out iridium ingots and then processing the further stages of that out on uh, Norvis. And so this means that the logistics are a little bit more complicated over here. But you, you've seen that before. You've, you've seen how all of that works. And, and it, it does work quite nicely. And now that we've uh, dealt with the... Well, I say we. Now that Mark has dealt with the, uh, the recipe changes over here, this should then start working quite nicely as well. At least once he's got a sufficient quantity of the, um, uh, of the uh, mineral water coming in. And one of the things that's quite notable about the uh, setup on Big Red is that it's completely train-free. Everything is being brought in by belts. In fact, and this is why we call them Mark belts. Because even though there's a core mine all the way over here in this lake, Lake. It's not. It's not bringing the stuff back by train. We've got a belt running all the way up along here to carry the core chunks back in over to here, where they're going to finally get processed. And so it, it's it's quite a long belt, yes, but it, it but it, it works. It's it's, it's another way of, uh, of of working on of, of building up these systems. And what colour belts is he using? He's using the fast ones. I think that's is that blue? No, he's using red belts for all of this. And I suppose to a point that makes a certain amount of sense because red belts are really really cheap to make. They just take iron, and so it's quite possible that for something like this, it actually is cheaper to run a really really long belt like this all the way across the planet than it would be to put down rails and have trains running. It certainly requires less fuel to keep the system running in the long run. And so he's taken the same sort of philosophy with the uh, with the mineral water as well so okay this isn't a particularly long pipe running across here I'd have done this by pipe as well but then also he's got another mine that's well we can follow this we can follow this uh, ducting all the way over here uh, and then all the way over here through the darkness back into the light and eventually we'll find that, yes down here there is another mineral water mine that is digging up more mineral water and this 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 one I couldn't wasn't going to link in with normal pipes but yeah we've got another duct running along here to bring that from here to all the way over to well fr from here all the way over to the processing facility over here and again it's going to work fine it, it'll it, it should it should be all right I imagine the, the ducts are high enough throughput that I expect that's going to be okay uh, worst case you might need to 
put I, I don't know if you can put duct pumps in. I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe you could drop it out of one duct with an exhaust and then back into another one with a um, with a duct intake. I'm I'm not sure what the best way to do it, to 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 make ducts longer is, but this this seems to be. I'm I, I'm sure this will work well enough, but uh, I guess we'll find out as the, uh, as the as the game progresses and once it once it's been finished off. We have a stream of bots running across here because there are uh, in in the process of upgrading this, quite a lot of machines were pulled up and quite a lot of those machines had quite a lot of stuff in them. So all of that went into storage. But now you can see that the Vita Melange is at, is being brought over, put into these chests, and that means it can flow into the into the crushers and, and be and then and then we'll actually pull all of the stuff that went into storage back out. Out again. I'm sure there'll be some yeah, there'll be some blue chests up here somewhere, pulling through any more of the advanced products that need to be reused, like, like the blooms and things like that. Uh, and so it'll all get we'll make sure it all gets used up eventually. And yeah, there we go. There's a blue chest over here that's uh, pulling through the pulling any bloom that might have ended up in the system out and sending that on to further further uh, further processing. But I think all of that has been taken in now. It's just there's a, a big stockpile of a uh, vitamin lange, just just the vitamin lange. I hesitate to call it ore because it's supposed to be a sort of a plant vegetable life type thing, but that's going to be pulled out of here. There's a load of spice up here. Is that spice or roast? Whatever this, whatever this one is, uh, spice that can then eventually be pulled out and put onto the belts to come in here, uh, and, and so on. So there's, there's a lot of byproducts have been pulled up by ripping out all of the buildings. But over time, we'll, we'll churn through all of that, get it back into the system, and, and, and circulate it all around again. There's also a lot of stone in here that could also be pulled out and uh, and either pass sent off to uh, Norbit in the in, in the disposal system or put into processing if it's needed on this planet. So you know, as I say, it's a work in progress. I'm not going to I'm not going to criticise because it's not finished yet but and, and you can see that the bots are, are carefully uh, coming along and, and tidying up after all the mess they made earlier. Mark does say that his current system is only processing uh, Vita Melange core chunks, so that's these ones that are coming in here from the core mining. So they get taken in, they get uh, chewed up into the into well wood and core chunks come out here to, to be sent off and reprocessed and then you get the Vita Melange um, ore coming in. Well, the Vitamin Lange ore comes out here, is passed straight over into these machines where it's crushed again, and that and the stone gets passed up the middle belt here. Um, he does say that he hasn't got a system that is working just from the Vitamin Lange ore, so if we dig it up from a normal mine, we can't use it. However, at the moment, we have a crazy, crazy supply of the core chunks, so at the moment, not a problem. We will uh, we'll happily churn, churn through these, but he, he does want to get, get it so that he can uh, run it from mines as well, if necessary, if, the, if, we t if we have a shortage, if we start using it up so quickly that the, all these belts of core mining product can't deal with it. Uh, he hasn't done that yet, but as, as you can, I'm sure you can imagine, that's going to be quite straightforward because, well, he's already got, he's already basically got it. He just needs to remove these columns of machines here and, and run the belts into it, it, it directly in where these ones would have their outputs. Now, knowing Mark, I'm sure he's going to come in and tidy the system up a bit. Maybe he'll have uh, shorter columns on here, or maybe he'll have um, twice as many machines or something like that. He'll, he'll make it look a little bit neater. I'm, my money's on the shorter columns, to be honest. Uh, so just three, th three um, crushers here, three crushers here will make the six to go across there to feed enough up for these machines but it could easily go either way and I don't think it really matters I do notice that these output belts seem to be a bit clogged up um, looking along here let's find out why all right there's too much stone on the belts in here not being fed out down this way to come over here and presumably be turned into sand and then something else so I don't know it yeah, turned into sand and then turned into glass and turned into all kinds of things over here to make the reagent so I don't know whether this is because this system over here hasn't got enough of the uh, the, the enriched vitamin lange coming in, or whether it's because we just have a, um, or whether it's because we have so much stone coming through that this system needs to be redesigned to have an overflow that will pour it off down the uh, down the disposal system to get rid of it. Uh, I think that's going to be something that's, that we'll need to keep an eye on. But at the moment, as I say, the whole system is very much work in progress, so I'm not going to come in and criticise because you know it's not finished and it's not fair to criticise something that hasn't been finished yet. Another change that happened in the update is that the electrolysis plants and the advanced chemical plants started taking significantly more power than they used to. So uh, I don't have the numbers to hand, but let's see if we can find out from here. Yes, if we look back over the last 10 hours, we can see that the, all the electrolysis plants on this planet went from taking 189 megawatts to taking 346 megawatts. So that's practically doubled, which is a fairly big jump. Um, and so that's, that's caused, that caused some problems, as I'm sure you can imagine. The advanced chemical plants had a similar increase from 391 to 730, 740, which is again not far off being a doubling of the amount of power they use. So, and those are, as you can as you can see on on this uh, on this on this particular planet, if we look over the last 10 minutes to get, to get a bit of a feel for it, they are. In, they're both in the top five of the of the most power used, and and the advanced chemical plants are 
absolute top. Now they're not top per machine um, because we've got fewer core mining drills and fewer advanced furnaces, both of which are using uh, more power per machine. Yes, but they, they but it's put them into the top the, the, the top five for the amount of power used overall for those things. And so that caused some brownouts, which caused a number of problems. So Tristan came over to the uh, the, the orbit of this planet. He's put in a lot more solar panels, so we've got a lot more power available here. And if we have another look at it, if we have a look with the with the eye of looking into the amount of power generated, you can see that there was a bit of an awkward along here where it sort of it sort of I was gonna say it sort of flatlined it didn't flatline quite as much as I would expect it to when because normally when you hit the maximum when you start to use all of the all of the available power you just get a dead flat line across the top because all of your power production is running absolutely a hundred percent and so you get a flat line because everything's running absolutely flat out now what's going on on the other side could be anything with different machines cutting in and out as you can see going on here but the power generation tends to flatline and that hasn't happened which is interesting but anyway uh, we've now got as you can see we've got a bit more power are there available. Uh, production, this this is lying because I've turned the lights on. We're actually only, presumably only producing half of that, so four gigawatts, but we're using just under three, maybe peaking at three. So we've got a decent, a decent amount of overhead available. This is now going to be absolutely fine. The downside of this problem is that it caused the um, the signal being sent on over the transmitters here to break down, and that caused problems at the other end. And over in Norbit, the signal stopped arriving here, and that meant that we didn't know what we were supposed to be loading onto or onto this spaceship. And so, in theory, we the system should be set up to fail safe. So you lose the signal, you stop feeding things in, and that's how it works with a lot of the train systems. If you don't get a signal, then it doesn't know what to put into the train, so it doesn't, and it just waits. And then when the signal comes back, it'll start reloading again. Unfortunately, the space Spaceships are set to unload anything that isn't being asked to be taken out, and the point behind that is it means that when the spaceship arrives with a mixture of all kinds of nonsense on it, you, then it'll all get unloaded and passed through to here, and then the stuff that's wanted on the planet will be passed into it. However, if you lose the signal and you no longer know what's wanted on the planet, then you start unloading the things that you've loaded on, and so you end up with the cryonite and the plastic and so on going out into these warehouses, then being sent up into the disposal system up here. Now, it's not the end of the world if that happens, because the disposal system is capable of dealing with all of that stuff. When it ends up down on Norvis, it'll just end up in a purple chest, it'll get taken away, and it'll get put into the various uh, requester chests that are asking for those sort of things. They'll get put back into the system eventually. At least, things like plastic would. I'm not quite sure whether vulcanite and cryonite would, so that's a... Um, hmm. We should probably check what's gone into the, into the systems down there. But in theory, everything that goes back down in the disposal system should end up getting sorted out and put back into a sensible place and, and recycled. However, it's still a pain because you don't want to unload the stuff from the ship that you want to load into it because it just means that you're then going to have to bring up more more cryonite, more vulcanite, all of that stuff from the ground in order to put it into the ship and then get it loaded up again. And so Tristan has worked on a sort of, a sort of keep alive system. So it's, it's looking for essentially what we can, could call a heartbeat signal. And so that, that step work is run down here with this co uh, combinator, which is watching for and if anything is not equal to zero. So if there's absolutely anything on the signal, then it'll output one green square, which is presumably passed into here. Yes, yeah, passed into here, and if, if there is a green square, then it'll output the signal that's being fed in from the rest of the system and, and, to, and allow these uh, these inserters to run. So we have another little safety feature in here that we make sure we have at least something coming in on the signal from the other planet. And the chances of there ever being nothing being signaled over there at all is practically zero, at least we hope it is. So this system down here will always uh, know when, there's, when, there's a, uh, when the signal is live and it will only allow the signal to be passed through to the uh, inserters if the signal is live. Hopefully that's going to fix the problem. I mean, if we do have brownouts again, it w we won't have the same problem. Now you'll notice that that hasn't been implemented on other on other spaceships um, because other ones haven't had the same problem, except for Talos. Talos had exactly the same problem and I believe has also been fixed. Let's go and check it. Yeah, so over here, you can see we're now using 3.2 gigawatts out of the 4.3 available and I haven't cheated over here. So this is the actual amount of uh, amount of energy being produced and that seems to be fine. We can see there's this, these sort of crazy spikes going on over here with the Advanced, well, these advanced furnaces that are using up most of the power there, maybe they've been increased as well. And the advanced chemical plants have sp spiked up wildly as well. So there is now potentially a lot more power being used on Talos as well. But Tristan has been kind enough to come out here. And this previously had a lot of blue solar panels on it. So a lot of them have been removed. In fact, if we look in here again, over 10 hours, you can see that, yeah, the, the orange line along here is blue solar panels and the blue line is red solar panels, which is very confusing, but never mind. Uh, so you can see the orange line dropping off down here and the blue line spiking way up as, as more of the, essentially as all of the uh, the blue solar panels have been replaced with red ones and now we have a load more power available. I think he's probably expanded it as well quite significantly. So we've got, a, we've got quite a lot of extra ones. In fact, yes, I know he has because I put down some more scaffolding down here because I had a little bit of it and we've now got a lot and, and it's pretty much all covered in the areas I was putting it in. 
in. So thank you very much, Tristan. Thank you for uh, sorting out power generation on my on my planet over here. It's very much appreciated because yes, it would have been a bit of a problem. Looks like we need another um, another substation in over here though, uh, because unfortunately I was um, building the system with with normal vanilla substations rather than with the uh, super excellent substations. I'm not really sure why. Uh, it must have just been what I had available at the time and what was cheap because Talos was the first exoplanet we went to apart from the ones for the uh, the Cryonite and the Vulcanite, uh, and so it's using it's. it's it started off with somewhat lower tech, and then down here, Tristan's come in and gone. What on earth was he doing? Why was he used the, uh, the the crappy substations? Let's go, let's come in and, and put in the proper pylon substations around here, the space exploration ones, and that mean that way we can have a lot more solar t chucked in there. It's just it's just quicker and easier to set up. So yeah, I'd say that's fair enough. So good, we've now got we've now got much more power available over here, and it's got around that problem. Another place where there's been absolute chaos from the from the updates is with, is in loader production. So over here. We are producing the various different types of loaders. We've got yellow, red, blue, green, purple, fine. Um, at least in theory we have. The problem is all the recipes have changed. So if we have a look down here, we can see that this loader now takes... Um, it takes yeah, iron gear wheels, fine, they were being fed in already. It takes green circuits, not so fine, they weren't being fed in. However, there's some of them over here, so that's not going to be too difficult to bring over. And and belts, well, that belts are fine, they're being, being fed in from here. Uh, we no longer appear to need, uh, are those iron beams or steel beams? I don't know, I don't care. And, some, and, the, and the small petrol engines. These don't need to be here anymore, they're just there because that was what was required for making these things before. So, yeah, that's thrown a spanner into the works there, so thank you very much. Um, that, one ha that one hasn't been fixed yet. Red ones are similar. These now need the small electric motors and red circuits. Well, red circuits are... Well, they're, they're over here, so it might be possible with lots of undergrounding to, to get some of them over here. I suppose, yeah, we, we can we can put a splitter in on here. We can put a very, very long underground belt over here and just spit them out straight into this into this machine. So, yes, that is kind of manageable. The small electric motors, goodness knows, that's going to be a pain in the, uh, in the proverbial. It takes in the yellow loaders and it takes in red belts. Those two are both fine. We've still got those available around here. Blue ones, we need big electric motors, which again, not around here anywhere. Uh, blue circuits, that's ac actually, that one's quite easy. And we need to start bringing in lube as well. Now, I think we should have lube in this area, because I'm pretty sure, yes, we do, it's over here. Because you do need it for all of the uh, all of the blue belts. Uh, that's going to need a little bit of shenanigan in -ing with the uh, with the inserters along here to get the um, to get these steel gears in. Assuming you do still, yes, you do still need them for, um, uh, for making the belts. So we're going to have to have something... I'm not quite sure how we're going to feed the uh, the lube in, in, into this machine. Um, I guess we could do that and we can... Yeah, I guess we could put another underground pipe like that and then fill in like this, which is horrible, but it would it would work. Uh, we'll see if we can come up with a better idea than that. But with these inserters being in here, it's going to be a little bit awkward and fiddly uh, to get to get that, that pipe through because we can't just put another underground in here and, and across to here because... Well, does it still? No, it doesn't require. However, this one doesn't require the steel gears anymore. So, I yeah, it, it's all a bit ridiculous with the, with the recipe changes. However, for the green and purple ones, the extra things they required were presumably immersive gear wheels and rare metals, and they were right here already. So that one was fairly easy. And the purple ones as well um, seems to require heavy bearings, immersive, and immersive gears. All of these sort of things were already in the right sort of areas as well. So those were relatively easy upgrades. So Tristan has done those. Uh, this one presumably by putting in an additional uh, loader here to grab the immersium, uh, beam, uh, immersium plates from here. And yeah, so on. It, it's all in the right sort of areas. So that was a relatively e quick and easy upgrade. Oh, there we go. We've got the lube now. Well, we've almost got the lube. Uh, it's not going to help though because we're still not going to have um, the, the blue circuits that we needed here. Additionally, up in space, I was halfway through a build when I discovered I, ha I was running out of uh, space loaders, and that's because they had a recipe change as well. So uh, previously, there was a machine up here that was making, I think, steel steel gears for them. If we take a look at the uh, the, the machine itself, we can see what what are we using here. So yes, I, ha I managed to spaghetti in the uh, the large electric motors. Fortunately, they were just down here on the bus, so that was fairly easy. It was just actually, that, I mean, I say spaghetti it in. That's just a normal normal loading from a bus coming up here. We needed, I think the blue circuits were new, but conveniently they were right at the, they were right here. Lube, I think lube, oh yes, lube was another one that we needed as well. So I put, I mean, fortunately again, fortunately the lube pipe was right here. So I was able to put a split off it there and do an, a little bit of an underground with the water pipe along here. So I got quite lucky with the, uh, with the space inserters. All the stuff I needed conveniently just happened to be really nearby and quite easy to fit, to, uh, to, to finagle in and, uh, and get, get it, get it running again. So that could have been a lot worse. I'm I'm quite glad it wasn't significantly worse because I that would have just been a just been a headache. Uh, but that that one I managed to get that managed to get that one upgraded relatively easily. 
I mentioned last week that there'd been a change to the dirty water processing recipes, and we got and so we'd uh, we jumped the gun a little bit, and we'd gone out certainly to Kothar and I think Njord and upgraded the water the dirty water processing systems on those planets um, to deal with the new recipe that was going to produce sand instead of stone. But then it turned out that wasn't required. It was uh, those those particular recipes didn't didn't require the uh, the new the changes. However, over here where we're making the iron, the dirty water that just produces generic dirty water, and so now it started to produce sand and a little bit of iron ore instead. Uh, Instead of the instead of the stone it was producing before, so over here we need to change the recipes and we need to start this this machine over here. Instead of doing uh, landfill from stone, we need to start doing landfill from sand like that, and that will start pulling that through. Unfortunately, that also requires water to be brought in, so we're going to need a little bit more pipe pipe work going up something like. Um, this in order to get it into the right place, uh, which is fine. We can do that sort of thing, and this will then allow us to get rid of all that sand. So Tristan said he'd gone through and done most of this, but it looks like he missed out on a bit of it. So we're going to have to. Uh, this one's going to have to be upgraded as well. For your reference, that's the one up in the top left over here. I imagine copper is going to be exactly the same. We're good. Yes. Oh no, this, this one has been upgraded. Has been switched over. So you can now see now that this one has it has got already got a sand assembly machine here, and so we are able to get rid of the uh, the sand from here, turn it into landfill, and then get rid of it with a purple chest. So yeah, there's um, a few places where this needs to be changed because the recipes have changed. Uh, but we'll we'll keep an, we'll try and keep an eye on those. Pick them off as they're done. Um, I think there's another there's another copper processing facility down here. Is it you? Yes, it's you. And you've been switched over to sand. And I think there might be another iron one as well. But I uh, I, I can't see it right now. So I'm not I'm not I'm not going to spend time looking for it while I'm recording. <laughs> so yes, in theory, those need to be changed over. This was spotted because we ran out of iron. So Tristan says we may well still be trying to still be playing catch up on the old iron front. And yes, as we can see down here the steel ingots are basically empty. Uh, that needs to do quite play quite a lot of catch up before it uh, before it gets back into the into the state where we like it to be. And uh, and next to it as well, I assume that steel plates. Um, yes, it is. Uh, that's also a little bit behind. So we'll you know we'll we'll let the system churn through and, and keep producing, and eventually we'll be okay again for both of those. And rare metals has been done as well in exactly the same way, but as you can see, that one's already caught up, or or maybe maybe it was caught before it got through all its buffer, so we never really got behind. Hard to say. We do seem to be a bit short of red circuits and, and blue circuits. Maybe I should look at that at some point, I don't know. Lithium, though, is another thing we need to take a look at, and not only because it's a bit low there, but also because Tristan made some changes to it. So the, again, once again, the recipes have changed. So over here is the lithium production. Apparently lithium now takes a lot more chlorine than it did before, so we've got a lot more machines in here making it. They've been beaconed up, they've been beaconed and, and, and speed moduled quite hard. Uh, Tristan says they are now producing at 20 times the previous rate uh, due to the due to the, the beacons and additional speed modules. The production graph doesn't seem to really agree with that, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to believe that he's done some major upgrades over here because it doesn't. I don't think this feels quite the way it did before. And so we now have well, we have one of the sides working at the moment. It's producing this trickle of lithium. I was going to say we have the system on the other side to set to only run when there's a shortage in the warehouse um, and and that, and that is true we've got this belt here to only run when there's less than 8,000 but there is currently only six and a half thousand in there so I'm not sure why this system isn't running um, there is nothing on the belt so the the, the prioritization is working fine but down here we have a shortage of lithium chloride because we have a shortage of hydrogen chloride because we have a shortage of chlorine over here uh, which is coming down this pipe from over here. Ah, right. So he's only upgraded one half of the production by the looks of it. We need to ha we need to have um, another system over here. Ah, yes. And this now feels very, very familiar. So I, I can now talk about this slightly more intelligibly because in the past, I remember when I first set this up, lithium production was basically a closed loop for chlorine. So you you bring in you 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 make some chlorine and then you turn it into hydrogen chloride. You pass it over here as into lith you turn it into lithium chloride and then over here you pull the lithium out of it and then you pass the chlorine background to be made back into hydrogen chloride to be made um, here to be made into lithium chloride and so on. So the same chlorine will just go round and round and round. So essentially you're making your lithium out of mineral water and hydrogen. Those are the things that were fed in and then um, every and then the chlorine just went round and round and round in a loop forever. So now the rest seems to have changed so that you don't actually get chlorine out as much chlorine out on the other side and so we're now so that's why over here we now have lots and lots of machines making extra chlorine in order to feed it over to these machines over here and it's getting it's now getting used up as part of the process so it, that's that's a bit of a change and that is why suddenly everything has broken and that's why these machines along the top here are presumably yes these machines along the top here are mostly dead and these ones over here are all dead they've, they've not got they've not got any input of chlorine they've used up what was available and it's now just completely broken yeah there's a a bit more fixing required over here, I think. Because we suddenly now started to need an enormous quantity of sand, that has meant Tristan has also increased the sand input. So we've got we've got the stone being brought in from the stone mines and being brought in off the off the bus fed system over here. 
And so previously, because the uh, chlorine was just going round and round in circles, we didn't actually have to produce any of it. So I was able to just chuck in a relatively small amount of stone at the start get, and, and get the system running. And, get, and, and then once it had filled up the chlorine tanks to a suitable level, it would just keep going round and round and round forever, and that would be absolutely fine. Then, this is quite a long time ago, Mark came along and required lithium chloride up in space for some of his weird biological stuff. And so he put in these uh, delivery cannons over here, and that meant we then needed a train to deliver some uh, stone over, which I think parked here at the time. So it was unloading stone into, into a warehouse that would then be passed over into here to be crushed, just to keep the area topped up. Then we stopped needing it because we turned off these delivery cannons because we moved away from delivery cannons. And I assume that means uh, Mark is getting his lithium chloride from somewhere else. I have no idea where it's coming from, but I assume he's getting it from somewhere else. And so at that point, we stopped needing the sand input. And I think at that point, we then uh, repurposed this area over here as a mineral water prioritization drop-off system. And so a train that's bringing mineral water over from core mining can stop here. Um, but if a, a and that means it's really, really close and will come in and drop off the mineral water here as and when it's required. And that means we'll use use the stuff from the core mining as a priority over what's being dug up out of the ground because we need to get rid of the core mining stuff. And so that worked. We didn't need a stone station here. We could have, we had a plentiful supply of, of, of chlorine running round and round in the system. Now that we require stone again, that means Tristan has put in this, this belt coming across from here. Actually, no he didn't. That was Mark. Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe my timeline is out. Anyway, we started pulling stone across from here and pulverizing it. But with the increased requirements of sand over here in order to make the chlorine, that was, is, has been insufficient. And so Tristan's come along and he's beacon the, uh, the crusher here. So this is now crushing much, much faster. We've got, <laughs> we've got a yellow belt coming in and we've got a mostly full green belt coming out on the other side. That's running really, really nicely. We've got loads and loads of sand available that can come down here and be made into the, um, in, into the chlorine. So I guess what we're going to need on, um, for, for the future, future part is to have another one of these crushers down here, a load more chlorine production, and then feed it into the other half of the machines over here. Yeah, in the time I've been talking, this has dropped from six and a half thousand to two and a bit thousand, uh, presumably because a train filled up and took it all away. So I think we probably do need more lithium production. I think we are going to need to expand this further. Uh, we shall see how that goes. Because enormous quantities of that lithium are then being used up in space in order to make... Um, I think that's in order to make the plasma stream, which is then being used to make the enormous quantities of ion stream we need. So it's just getting, gobb it's just getting gobbled up in enormous quantities by the space system. We need to increase this quite a lot. The final big change that happened in the update that's been affecting us is the advanced science packs. Well, they were originally advanced science tech cards, and they were being made over here. We had we were feeding in all the bits and pieces, and that was absolutely fine. It was running really, really nicely. But as you can see now, these machines are not very happy. They've turned from they've they've switched from trying to make advanced science tech cards to trying to make advanced science packs, and so that means all of the inputs are wrong. We now these are now treated like any other um, space exploration science pack rather than rather than the tech cards that were part of Crastorio 2. And so that means instead of requiring um, space flooring, immersium gears, batteries, bio scrubbers, uh, pylons, and blank tech cards, they now require significant data, advanced catalogues, advanced neural gel, and thermofluid. And none of that is here. So this, this whole area is now all complete and utter nonsense. It's not required. We're just going to have to rip this up and return everything back to where it came from. And we'll probably find that half the things that are coming in here, yeah, the, like these batteries and the bio scrubbers, are only on the bus at all um, down here because they're needed for that particular tech pack. Uh, now it's possible the battery, yeah, the batteries are being fed off up here to go into the into the tower of construction. So that's not so bad. But the bio scrubbers are literally, I, yes, the bio scrubbers appear to only be here in order to make those those tech cards, which they're no longer needed for. So that's great. So this is all going to have to be ripped out and relocated somewhere else. So Tristan was taking a bit of a look at that in the last video. And he, so he started off by going into advanced. He was having a look at how, how do you make an advanced science pack? Well, you need all those things, as I was saying. So, okay, the advanced neural gel, that's fine. We've already got that for, I think, the deep space science. That's even already over in the science park. Significant data, already over in the science park. Fine. Super cool thermofluid, exactly the same. Fine. This is just setting up another, another typical space exploration science pack. Then he had a look at the science cat and the, the catalog itself. And over here, you require, well, some, there's some interesting stuff required here. So there's the combined catalogue, which requires you to take in, is that a tier, that's tier threes of all four of the other types of science packs. So that's um, fun. Not sure where, he, where or how he's going to do that. Now, they are all on the train system, in a way. So he could, in theory, have a tra uh, put in a station to request these and, and pull the train over to grab them whenever he needs them. However, the problem with that is that we've currently got the trains that carry the catalogue set up to come over to here as soon as they can and then just sit here until they until they run out of something. So if we look at the uh, if we look at the uh, this this train, you can see that it goes to um, 
Ha! Tristan's already changed these by the looks of it. Uh, so it go, I was going to say it goes from energy cattle or pick up one pickup till it's, it stays, stays there till it's full. Then it goes over to drop and then waits there until it's told to leave based on the signals coming out of here. We, we, you know, with the whole whole negative thing when you get when there's less than three hundred of anything left in there, send an air, send a signal to the. This is not working the way I thought it did. I am slightly confused. I thought we had a setup here where you watched until there was a shortage of something in here and then sent the train away to go and get some more. Is that because that's the one Tristan set up and other ones that I've set up are different? Yes, it is. So up here, if we look at the deep space science, which isn't required for the uh, combined catalogs, so maybe, maybe he's fixed them all, all the other ones, and, and but not this one. So you can see over here, we've got we've got a minus one of those in, in there. So it's looking, it's watching the warehouse, and when it runs out of those things, then it sends a D signal to the, to the train, and that tells the train to depart. So the train will sit here until the warehouse runs out of one of the catalogs it's supposed to be bringing in. That needs to be updated to have a a, a, um, a tier two catalog in here as well, and then it'll tell the train to depart and go and get some more. And the point behind that is it means that then the train can sit here unloading and unloading and unloading until until there's an actual problem here, rather than clearing off just because it's got a little bit bored. Um, however, if you want them in multiple places, that ain't going to work. So I presume yes, Tristan's come in down here and he's now setting the train limit. He's now setting the train limit on the station to call in a train whenever there's a shortage of any of the any of the science packs so that is going to work fine um it's just mean, means there's had to be some changes made in order to get all these through so it looks like tristan is way ahead of um, of what i was saying so he's going to have set up a station somewhere at some point that will or he's going to set up four stations somewhere at some point that's going to pull in all of these catalogs and then going to be able to make the combined catalogs which will then get put onto a train and fed over here etc etc so that's kind of fine you then need remote sensing data, which doesn't get made anywhere, so that's always a sign that that comes from um, from launching probes. And so he set that he has set that one up, and that is now done over here. So that's making a new type of probe over here, uh, which is which consists of mostly of stuff that we already have over here. So the um, the rocket control units there, as you can tell from the sheer quantity of spaghetti up here, were already available in this area. So he's brought some of those down, fed them in here. Solar panels also also available around here. That's so that's good and relatively easy. Uh, solid rocket fuel, I, I believe. Yep, that was coming in down here already. Data cards, yes, plenty of those. And the uh, radars. Well, he's managed to finagle those in. I believe they were already being brought up to space for something else. I can't remember what. I think they need they needed somewhere on the bus anyway. For, uh, and so it was a relatively easy job to put them onto the trains to bring them up here as well. Uh, so those are now being fed down here, and those are being fed in as well. So those those are actually all surprising, relatively easy. The only one of those that was remotely complicated was the radars and that was not too bad as it goes. He's then got a, a nice long belt here that's bringing over the um, uh, probe rockets. They can then be fed into here and launched off. That will make the data cards which can be fed down here into this warehouse. Now I'm not sure why this has stopped at the moment. He's got the two rocket silos. Why, why have you stopped? You've got um, oh, he's turned he's turned it off manually. So I imagine at some point in the not too distant future, he's going to set up a he's going to connect this warehouse and this inserter and tell the inserter to only only insert when there's less than. I don't know, 2,000 data cards in here or something like that. And that means he can then have another train go from here. He can grab the data cards from here. And at some point, he'll set up another science construction area for doing the advanced tech cards. Maybe maybe over here, maybe over here. Who knows? That's up to him. It doesn't It doesn't really matter. We're, we're flexible enough that he could. it could be tacked onto the top of one of these places. In fact, if we go back and look at the other... Um, cards he might, there might be a reason in here why I want to put it on on top of an existing stack like we did with the uh, the matter science so the matter science was put down here because it took in a lot of the things that energy science did including taking in a lot of the energy science data cards so it was much easier to just run them down a belt than to train them over so if we have a look at power density data well that requires lithium sulfur batteries energy control units and holmium accumulators so that's I mean that that could go anywhere there's nothing particularly special about that although the holmium the holmium side of this makes me think down here is a possibility but we shall see then quantum computing data is quantum processes. So again, that's another energy science related thing. So he could put that on the bottom of here. It would make a certain amount of sense. But I think probably putting it somewhere completely different is going to be a little bit simpler. I don't know. I don't think it really matters. We'll, so we'll just wait and see what he feels like doing. But then once he's got those, he's going to be get, get those together, make the combined, turn the, uh, with the combined catalogue, turn that into an advanced catalogue, and then ship that over to the science park. And we can start making the advanced uh, science packs over here. Uh, that can then we'll we'll then have to somehow finagle another belt in all the way through down here, uh, but then it can go in and replace the. Uh, oh, he's actually he's, no, he's already got some advanced tech cards. That's interesting. Oh, I know where these will have come from. Yes, so all the ones that are. <laughs> So, because it's been a straight up recipe upgrade, the all of the advanced tech cards that we'd already made will have been magically turned into advanced data packs. 
And so those have been brought, all the ones that were in the train in the warehouse all the way over here will have just been magically upgraded. So there, we, we, we have at least a few of those. We can do a little bit of research before we start to have a crisis. And also, once he has finally made them and they are ready to be fed into the labs down here, they can just be dropped onto the top side of this belt and we'll be able to fit, fit them in here without, without too much difficulty. Uh, we may, that, that said, hmm... I don't know. We may end up with an additional belt coming down here and going in across here because I think there is an advanced science pack two that we will need to make at some point as well. So, yeah, there's lots and lots of sciencey stuff going on here. So. But we are heading in the right direction. I don't think I don't think creating the rest of this is going to be too difficult at this point. Uh, mostly because Tristan has now done most of the hard work. But we'll see next week. We'll see how that's gone. How he's got on with the rest of it then. So, finally, that brings me to the end of all the things that got broken in the new update. Uh, that's been rather a lot of stuff because, well, it was it was quite a big update. I think the idea behind it was to sort of space explorationify a lot of the um, a lot of the a lot of the K2 additional stuff that was in there, uh, and so now it's more. Theoretically, it's more coherent. It's more more like space exploration, uh, which in some cases means it's harder. Loaders have been made much more difficult to make, and so on and so on. But in theory, it fits the balance and the sort of the ethos behind space exploration a little bit better. I mean, how true that is, and how much of it is just because Arendelle doesn't like certain ways of doing things, I'll leave that up to you to judge. But things like increasing the amount of power that's used by the really really powerful uh, machines makes a certain amount of sense because the machines are really really powerful so they need to have some kind of downside it's just a little bit cruel to have these changes happen part way through a uh, part way through a run for us <laughs> The other thing I started doing in the last stream was making the deep space belts, uh, and these are all being made up here, as you can see, I've got the underground, the actual normal belts themselves, and the uh, splitters all being put together up here, and this is because I thought, well, we've now got a decent supply of things like uh, Naquium and so on, well, in theory we've got a decent supply of them, it would be nice to have these belts available in slightly bigger quantities than just the random bits and pieces we've uh, we've rescued, and I say rescued, we've uh, liberated from uh, various crashed spaceships and, and, uh, and other artifacts. And so it was about time to start making them, because we've, we've had the frustrations with these belts not being all that quick, as I've said a number of times in the past. They're only 45 per second, which is the same as blue belts on the ground, which is great when you're coming from um, Vanilla Factorio, but when you've got the faster uh, Crastorio belts available, the space ones start to seem a little bit pathetic, especially with the really, really short underground of them. They can only go under five squares, which is a little bit feeble. So I thought I'd, it was a good, good opportunity to have start having a look at these. Now, we're not going to start using them everywhere like we have been with um, with the green and purple belts. We've been using those very, very heavily. But we, they, we do want to have them available just so that you can use them when, you've, when you're starting to run into problems in a build, like you can't go underground far enough or you just need to squeeze a bit more throughput through a, uh, through, through a belt system. And so these required a few things to be brought in, um, and I, I considered originally just trying to put a few more things on the bus, just bring them up the Tower of Construction as normal, as has happened with everything else, and is now kind of um, kind of chaotic. But then I had a look down here, and it turns out there is no more room for any more uh, any more things to be put onto the bus. The the bus is essentially full because we've got practically down to the railway lines down here. Uh, I did take the one remaining slot on here for the uh, for the heavy bearings because those are a thing that are brought up from Norvis, and so to have those go a different way would be extremely fiddly. Um, but I managed to so I managed to yes, bring those over here. They're being brought up spaghetti through here, and then brought up this belt with along with the iridium bulkheads or whatever they're called. So those those are being brought up, and those are needed up here. But for other things that are being made in space, I thought, well, let's start putting in uh, drop off stations up here. So we've got nanomaterials coming in here because the, the nanomaterials come from the uh, deep space science production area. We've got superconducting cables being brought in here. We've got naquium ingots being brought in here, and, and in theory, we've got naquium cubes being brought in here. But uh, at the moment, we have a shortage of naquium, so they're not being made fast enough. So that that's just just not really happening. Um, and those are all being brought over here to be made into in, into things up here. Now I did notice after I brought in the superconductive cables that superconducting cables are also actually they're being made on the tower of construction down um, down here. Uh, so I didn't actually need to bring those in. I hadn't noticed, hadn't realised, so I, I brought them in separately on a train. So I feel a little bit silly. Uh, whether that's a good thing or not, there is a stronger production facility making these. I could potentially feed them back down the bus down here, but that definitely isn't worth it. It's definitely not worth unpicking it, especially as this is a that this belt carries the heavy 
heavy assemblies as well. And so he's bringing them up from the bottom. So I can't just turn the belt round. So that's just going to stay as it is. So comically, up here, because the deep space splitters require heavy assemblies, I've brought this belt in. However, I brought this one in first because I hadn't noticed that uh, they, they were already existed. And so I've actually got the superconducting cables being brought in from both sides, which is, yeah, a little bit silly, but never mind. It just adds to the throughput. <laughs> and so all of this stuff, everything else was already pretty much available on the bus. So it wasn't too difficult to get all this being put together. I have brought the underground uh, space belts and the underground and the space belt splitters in by bot, which I feel a little bit guilty about, but they're, they're only required in relatively small quantities and my patient has has certain limits i did bring the belts in by belt so that's they're, they're being brought in because that wasn't and that wasn't too difficult they're being brought up this long one from down here because there's a, they're just down here somewhere they're being made as part of the science so i've tapped off the top of the uh the space science and just taken them away from there because well to be honest because why not uh, the the undergrounds and the splitters are just being made down here. I suppose in hindsight, I probably got everything I need to make the splitters and to make the underground belts up there. Maybe I'll maybe next time I'll, uh, I'll I'll do it properly and I'll start making I'll just make them on site because I think we've probably got pretty much all the things we need up here, or at least on the on the bus system in general. So I probably could start making them up here and then just feed them straight across into there. I'll take a look into that next time and and, and consider it. And so that is making three out of the four deep space. Things. We've got the belts, we've got the undergrounds, and we've got the splitters. I haven't bothered with any of the colours yet, however that will be fairly easy to do in the future. If we need those, then it's just it's just the normal belts and a lamp, so we can, we can put those together. But most of the time, you don't really need them, apart from sort of pretty aesthetic reasons, or if you want to do some sort of horrendous belt braiding monstrosity. And I, I don't like doing belt braiding monstrosities, so we, uh, I've, I've, I've not made any of the other colours yet. We'll see, we'll see if we need them. There is also, of course, the deep space loader, and I took one look at the recipe for this and went, I don't think that's worth it. I mean, look at the look at the price of this thing. It takes a, a belt and a loader, fine, that seems reasonable. It takes 10 immersium gear wheels, it's not too bad. 50 heavy assemblies, 10 naquium cubes, 50 nanomaterials and 10 quantum processors. And, oh, and a thousand lube as well, because why not? Uh, that just seems a bit unrealistic, just a bit unreasonable, to be honest. I think we're, so I think we're just not going to bother with deep space loaders. Anywhere we need those, we'll use a, um, a deep, we'll use a deep space splitter and then two normal space loaders because these things they're only still only 90 items per second they're only twice as fast as a normal space loader so i think we can just have two of those instead of all of that stuff and i think we'll probably be fine with that and now okay in theory we could run into a problem with not enough room on a machine to cram but then when you when are you going to need to cram 90 items a second into a machine uh, when it's surrounded by tier 9 speed modules probably but you know it's, it seems a little bit um it seems a little bit unlikely so uh, i looked at that and went I don't think that's worth it. We're not going to do that one. And I reserve the right to change my mind in the future, but for now, we're not going to do that one. Building these upgraded deep space belts has allowed me now to upgrade the, uh, the the scrap disposal belt that runs all the way up the middle along here. So now this is all deep space belts. And so you can see now it's, it's capable of transporting twice as much. And so every so often when the, when the material science kicks in and starts producing an obscene amount of uh, scrap like this, then hopefully we can get rid of it a bit more quickly. Now this is presumably just very, very gappy along here now because we've got it coming in at 45 items per second and then being fed on at 90. Uh, so maybe we should upgrade this belt along here. I don't know. We'll, we'll see later. But mostly it was so that when we get further down over here and we've got scrap being fed in by other things as well we were having problems with the throughput so i think so i decided that having a bit doubling the throughput available along here was very very worth doing now right now it's not really the case because we're not doing we're not doing as you can see up here this has been frozen we're not really doing science at the moment because we've we've had shortages of all kinds of things because of all of the new recipes and what does this particular science pack need uh, it needs deep space science one maybe that's what we've run out of I, I imagine it probably is uh, so we're not producing a great deal of scrap at the moment so the system is quite is absolutely fine and capable of dealing with it but when we have everything running again this is going to massively increase we're going to get a lot more put being poured through here and then this is where we start to get the argument that maybe some of these deep space loaders would be a good idea but alternatively, I think more sensibly, we'll upgrade some of these these boxes to slightly bigger ones, so we can we can put more loaders going into them. We'll we'll just not worry about it too much. The biggest problem is going to be down here, where we have uh, one, two, three four, five belts of scrap being poured into it, or in here, and then another, five, and then five coming out of it, well, four and a half coming out of it again. Uh, we may we may need to change, I may need to change my mind on the loaders just to upgrade the few of them down here. But at the moment, I think we want to see how well it works and when when it's un, when the system is under load before we start deciding, yes, we do need to upgrade this because it's, it's not coping. At the moment, it is clearly coping. We will see what happens once we start trying to do bigger and better sciences. Uh, we may need to do some upgrades here as well. We shall see.
And so this brings us to the near, nearly the end of the video where we start talking about uh, the re research that's been done. We have done the uh, tier 5 bio, well we're working through the tier 5 bio upgrades. So we've got intelligence, dexterity, constitution and agility done and we're currently working on strength. Those all, as you, as you saw a moment ago, require the Deep Space Science Pack 1, which is why we've only just got round to them. Um, and we don't have enough Deep Space Science 1 to get those done. But these give useful things like lab research productivity, so it's, it's very worth getting that one as soon as you realistically can. The next one we're going to do is nutrient enrichment, but as I say, that is actually literally all the research we've done. In the last, in the last stream, there was so much of me, me going out trying to get the Naquium production fixed because we don't have enough of it. Mike beating his head against uh, Arcospheres and the other two were working on the upgrades. And so we've not really had much in the way of science progress made along here. We now need huge amounts more Naquium to be brought in in order to get all of those cubes, all of the all the crystals, all the ingots, all the everything that we need in order to make the Deep Space Science Packs a bit faster. And so until that's been a bit more upgraded and is, you know, just actually working, we're not going to be able to do very much science. And so that's been a very, very short science update that brings us to the end of the video and I shall be back tomorrow yes tomorrow Sunday with a Warptorio supporter stream and that a supporter stream means that uh, anyone who is a channel supporter is welcome to come along and join in uh, we're getting fairly close to end game as I was saying yesterday where we are uh, we're now at the point where we can start thinking about putting bits and pieces together to start launching rockets so we've built a silo we just need to get all the bits and pieces into it and we need to work out how we're going to get them in there which is going to be um, interesting but from there, we will then, yes, get the rocket launched reasonably soon. I have no doubt that we will do that in the next stream. Even if we have to hand feed the silo, we'll get that done in the next stream. Um, after that, there's going to be a load of research to do with the space science packs. I imagine we'll do our normal thing of finishing when we've done all of the non-infinite -re research. And so after that, we'll have to think of something else to play in, on the, in the supporter stream. So um, let me know in the comments what you think we should do next. <laughs> I will then, of course, be back on Monday, so two streams in a row, crikey, uh, where we'll be playing some more uh, Factorio K2SE, sorting out all the problems I've been talking about today and yesterday, and whoo boy, there's quite a lot of problems. I will then, finally, I'll be back then on Wednesday when there will be another uh, satisfactory stream. I'm going to be carrying on building up my um, my system that's supposed to be making the adaptive control units, but so far I've built an absolute monstrosity, and it's not, and, it, and it's only making one of, one or two of the, uh, the intermediates that are required for it. However, I've made some good progress. I've got a nice train system up and running, so... I expect that I'll get there relatively soon. Uh, so come along to the stream and find out how things are going on. And then, of course, I'll be back on uh, at the weekend with the uh, with these catch-up videos as usual. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.